This audio is brought to you by Presales Pens and Scribbles. Welcome to the PPS Club Podcast Edition by Priscilla Spence and Scribbles. Tara Emanuel, as you guessed it, is my pen name, and I'm an emerging writer of fiction and a lover of books. I also love trying my hand at short stories, poetry, and occasional essays. I speak French, English, and Lingala, and in this podcast, I teach you some of it through translation. Those who heard the first two episodes probably know this already. But if you are new, I can't begin to tell you how much that means to me. But I'm not so good at introductions anyway. So, let's get down to business, shall we? In this episode titled How I Started Writing Fiction, I will share with you the first romance I ever wrote in a short story. So, it's no news that almost every writer will say something along the lines of, well, I loved writing ever since I was three years old, six years old, or this or that, etc. In short, they almost all began writing early. However, I consider myself one of the late bloomers, and for me, it was a love at first sight. And getting started, I didn't know what I was doing, you see? When I first thought about writing fiction, I needed to write what I was feeling and fiction felt like a decent outlet for me. But I wasn't anywhere near good and I stopped. That was a little over a year ago. Then in April 2020, I had nothing else to do with my time except reading whatever caught my attention online. I hadn't read fiction in months before then, so I started reading a bunch of free stories written by people from all over the world on a site called Wattpad. And so Wattpad felt like a good place to start rising to. So I wrote my first 20,000 word YA story and posted it. I finished the story in a month and it was out there for people to read in all its imperfectness. The story was written in French and it was called L'Arnac du Siècle. When I looked at what I had written, it gave me an idea to rewrite the book and remove all the tidbits of my own experiences that slid in there, things people who knew me would recognize and instead make it a work of art. The second version of the story is still a draft in my computer with a new title and with a new plot and maybe, just maybe, a new goal. Although no one can really brag about an unfinished work. For me, here are three things I got from it. Number one, the desire to write a better story gave me a writing pattern that works better when writing in English, where I find it easier to say things clearly using less words by deleting run-on sentences and extra explanation. Number two, I started my second project, a full-length novel, shortly after putting the first book on pause and finished my first 70,000 word draft within six months. And number three, I took my writing seriously and set out to get published one day. Before I read today's short story, here is what I want you to take away from this episode and also what motivates me to write. Whether you're a family-friendly content lover or a storyteller like myself, this will be a space for us to chat, grow, nurture, and make each other think. Stories are part of our daily lives. It's what you and I have in common at the end of each day we spend living on planet Earth. To me, and this is what motivates me, Life is like a story anthology that's made out of chunks of aspirations, memories, plans, dreams, conflicts, and love, all of which cannot be made in solitude except for dreaming and unrealistic plans for sure. 
So you can tell your life story in one sitting, no matter how good of a narrator you are, because not everyone will see things the way you present them as a whole. They are most likely to pick a specific part that speaks to them directly. It would be nice to have an audience that will stick around for those gems they didn't know they were looking for. And also, wouldn't it be great if the same people could get their questions answered by someone else in the club? Of course it would. That's right. We are in this together, you the listeners, the guests, and myself. So with that said, I want to thank you for hanging around and sticking around. Now, about that first story of mine, I should tell you my writing was vestigial at the time when it came together. And I talk about the evolution of my writing in my last newsletter article on Substack. You can read it at the ppsclub.substack.com. I was confident about these characters back in April 2020, so please give them some love. In next month's episode, I would like to reply to some of your questions, even if you don't have a question but would like to share your thoughts and stories with me. Let me hear from y'all. Without further ado, I present to you the Marcus and Luna, the Valentine's Romance. Author's Note This story is set in an alternate South Africa, and the book from where it is derived talks about a young girl named Ruby following her in a coming-of-age family saga, where secrets kill and hearts bleed. Marcus and Luna, the main characters of this spin-off, are Ruby's grandparents. This is Marcus and Luna, a Valentine's Romance. Marcus Clark was a man with big dreams. He was only 18 years old when his parents bought him a studio in Johannesburg for him to continue studies at university. Ever since he lived in Underberg, his hometown, Marcus dreamed of becoming rich quickly the moment he got to the city. So he left and never looked back. Marcus never failed to accomplish anything he said his mind to do before. Becoming rich, however, was not a child's play. Money doesn't grow on trees, they said. Marcus understood that from the first week. He used his pocket money and bought himself a nice bicycle and rode it to town to find a job that would help pay for his books and occasional entertainment which was still a luxury for him. Marcus rode his bicycle every morning to collect newspapers for delivery. After two years, he felt his dream of becoming rich before the age of 25 fading away. His parents were never rich, although they owned farmlands and hundreds of flocks back home. They still had 10 other children to take care of. Marcus was on his own. At 20 years old, delivering newspapers during the early freezing hours of the morning seemed like a decent way to make some money. Marcus had to put his ambitions on hold and study hard. One day, I will own a multinational business brand. He said to himself as he glanced at the pricey cigar in the wrinkled fingers of the man sitting at an open-air cafe while he was handing him the newspaper. The luxury cigar was branded with an M, engraved in gold ink on a band the color of ivory. Donkey boy, the grumpy Mr. Monroe said, throwing a 50-cent coin at Marcus. Everybody feared that old man, but all Marcus could see when he looked at him was that he was filthy rich. In fact, Louis Monroe was classified as the richest man in the city of gold. It was written in Forward, the best newspaper in the year 1959. 
Marcus didn't know what his own company would be making yet, but he thought about it constantly. He encountered all kinds of people before he reached his campus for his 9 o'clock class. He was studying accounting and business. He first went to the baker, who always kept the croissant waiting for him by the train station. Then, to the young, stunning Caribbean goddess who worked at, as a columnist for the newspaper and also became his favorite person to look at. She looked breathtaking through the glass window as he passed by on his way to the mailroom. On a fateful morning, Marcus went for a pickup and he saw her. What's she doing here? Marcus fixed his messy blonde hair and kept telling himself she wasn't supposed to be there in the mailroom that morning. He tripped on his way to get his bundle and money when the 19-year-old woman saw him and intercepted him. Do you mind if I ask a few questions? Marcus didn't say a word. Did she want to interview him for an article? He asked himself. Sure. What do you want to know? He asked. Well, my name is Luna Zanera and I work for the Rand Daily Mail. I need you to tell me a little more about how the company has been treating the workers on this side of the manufacturing chain, she said while taking notes. Marcus didn't have a choice but to agree to being interviewed. How bad could it be? Me, a 20-year-old student interviewed by an angel. This must be my lucky day. Take my money, he joked. The woman was blushing. She probably wasn't used to being called an angel, at least not by a grey-eyed gentleman who actually meant it. After the interview, Marcus invited her to the Flaming Teapot Cafe, where they talked until he was running late for his third class. It was love at first sight. Marcus was sure of it. Ever since Marcus and Luna met, he brought her a cup of hot cocoa every morning before going to class. One fateful Friday night, Luna and her friends from the newspaper were going out for a drink. Luna didn't want to go alone, but she was too new to the dating game and didn't know how to ask Marcus if he wanted to go with them. They'd only known each other for a week. Little did she know, Marcus had a date planned out that same night and waited for her with a delicate fresh rose from his backyard in his hands right outside her office. What is this, Marcus? It's for you. Happy Valentine's Day. He dropped a gentle kiss on her cheek. Luna was completely unaware it was Valentine's Day. Marcus even made a joke about it saying, unbelievable. Who would trust a columnist who can keep up with the most popular holiday of all time? Luna was always working hard. She needed the money and never really had time for couplings or anything that had to do with romance at all. However, meeting Marcus was the breath of fresh air she needed. In fact, Luna had become a new person and love made more sense to her when Marcus opened her eyes. The following year, after the 1960 New Year celebration, the young couple had been courting for a while and with Valentine's Day and their first anniversary around the corner, they wanted to make it special. But with no money, they thought about designing Valentine's greeting cards and sell them to their friends. In just a few months, their little idea turned into an entire business. They became popular. The business was very successful and they expanded it to printing greeting cards for other occasions until four years later, they had enough money to buy a house and get married. 
Marcus sold his old studio and founded Clark & Company upon his graduation from business school. He was 24 years old. At 25, Marcus's Clark & Company became one of the largest manufacturers and suppliers of stationery with an impeccable reputation among its major customers. Luna gave birth to a baby girl named Lauren two years after they got married. Marcus finally had it all and he was grateful. He planted a garden of roses where he went every morning to pick up a rose and brought it to his wife just like he did every day since their first date. I'll teach all my boys to do it for their women. This will be the clock man's tradition, he told Luna, making her laugh. They had another child two years after Lauren was born and they named him Tom. Marcus wasted no time. Before the boy could even learn how to walk, he made him deliver the fresh rose to his mother every morning. Marcus and Luna ended up having more children, five in total, by the year 1973. They had a happy family. The end. back with our learning section which has been revamped with a brand new name the word of the month is now called thrislation yes it's called thrislation as in translation anyway this is where you learn how to say thrice with thrice the confidence and be thrice as fluent in french English and in Ghana. And today's thrice nation comes from an English word and the word is drive. The word drive is defined as the desire to attain a goal. That's the short definition. So how do you say drive in French? Listen very well. Determination. I will say it once more. Drive in French is Determination. And in Ingala, we say Ekateli or Ekateli Makasi. Now, to have drive, in French, you will say, avoir de la détermination. Avoir de la détermination. And in Lingala, you will say, kozala na ikateli. Or, kozala na ikateli makasi. And that's it for today. That was our thrice nation for the month of June. Let's have drive. Ayons de la détermination. Tozala na ikateli makasi. Bye. This was the PPS Club Podcast Edition with Tira Emmanuel, brought to you by Prisels, Pens and Scribbles.